So let's look at the mechanism of the encryption and decryption. So first of all, let's talk about the types of encryption technologies. Now, first of all, we have something called the, there are two types that primarily use uh, for the encryption method. Now, the first method is called the uh, symmetric encryption. It's also known as what we call shared key encryption. So which means both parties will share the same key for encrypt and also to decrypt. Right, so this is the same key used for encryption and also for decryption. And the second type is called the asymmetric encryption. So two different keys are used for encryption and decryption. Okay, and uh, typically this is also known as the public key infrastructure. So each and every uh, party, it could be the sender or it could be the receiver, uh, they will actually first generate a pair of key is we, we call it the public key and also the private key now private key as the word suggests is a key where you do not expose and you do not share with anybody and private public key on the other hand is the key that can be uh, openly vis visible by anyone um, over for example the internet so private key is for data protection and the public key is used by the user in the same system to check the validity of the information of the sender. So let's look at how it works on the symmetric encryption. So this is the sender, right? So step one, this is the plain text message, and then go through a symmetric key. Uh, for example, a shared password. Okay, it can be any password, and then it will perform the encryption algorithm, and then you come up with the encrypted. Uh, message and then this message will then send to the to the receiver so for the receiver point of view uh, let's assume that the receiver knows the same password or the same shared key and so the receiver will use the key to decrypt and to receive the message so this is simple this is called symmetric and the advantage of symmetric is actually pretty fast okay um, the second type is called the asymmetric. Okay, so let's just do a recap. Now, public key bas basically means uh, it's a key which is visible to anyone in the public, or you can say this public key is a key which we can share to anyone. So again, each and every user will first will generate a set of key. We call it a public and a private key, and these two value of the key are not the same. Okay. So, for example, if sender would want to send something to uh, the receiver, so let's say receiver is Bob, and the sender here is Alice. So what Alice needs to do is to take the public key of Bob and to perform the encryption with the original message to become an encrypted uh, message. And then this message will then send over to Bob. So Bob in order for Bob to decrypt the message, Bob can use its private key to the de 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 uh, to decrypt, and after that, Bob can read the message. So, uh, and again, the emphasize here is that public key and the private key are not the same value, but it has to be generated at the same time uh, in order to have the uh, the uh, the algorithm to be able to. Uh, encrypt or decrypt. So in this situation, B uh, can read the message and without exposing his or her key. Now this method has a uh, one big issue. Okay, which is um, now anyone can just use Bob's key to send to to Bob because here there's no uh, mention about who's the sender. So sometimes Bob could probably accidentally open up uh, and a uh, virus okay so let's look at the the comparison between symmetric and asymmetric encryption now symmetric encryption uh, the strength is actually fast encryption and also decryption why because they both share the same key and there's no need to worry about how to uh, so, sorry there is a concern about how to transmit the key okay so how do you bring the key over to uh, your receiver to say that hey I'm using this key I'm gonna encrypt this and you're gonna use that key to decrypt now, this is the problem because the key 
again as you sent it over internet your key has been exposed and then probably it would it might defeat the whole purpose now on the other hand asymmetric encryption the strength is actually a very high security in terms of the key because again we will never never expose our private key no matter what and only we expose the public key to our uh, to anyone okay so uh, the weakness is actually the encryption and the decryption are speed sensitive so it takes time to perform the transmission of the you know the information the key so let's look at this uh, first concept of the, the data encryption we call this digital envelope okay so let's go back to the uh, uh, Bob and the Alice uh, example so let's say this is Alice and this is Bob so let's look at step number one so step one is um, Alice wants to send something to Bob and so Alice will send the um, will actually will generate a symmetric key uh, and also it will she will actually uh, encrypt the message into this message now the question is that how Alice are going to send over the symmetric key so Alice uses this interesting method which is okay so first of all this is step four sorry step four is that this symmetric key will then we use Bob's public key to encrypt the key okay to encrypt the key to become this encrypted symmetric key so which means the key itself has been encrypted as well and then these two messages will then be sent over to to Bob so when Bob receives the key first of all Bob needs to de decrypt using his private key to decrypt what is the symmetric key right so after upon uh, successful decryption then Bob will then use the symmetric key value to perform a decryption and therefore the original value will then be exposed uh, can be readable by Bob okay now again this method is a very interesting method it actually solves two problems which is first of all in terms of a uh, symmetric key has the advantages of uh, encrypt uh, of uh, advantage of uh, to speed up the process of encryption and decryption and also we solve the problem of how do we send the key over without being easily to be uh, to expose the key so however the problem is that the one I just mentioned before in the previous slide which is how can Bob to be able to uh, to verify that the sender is actually is really from what Alice claim now because if you look at this um, the whole process there is no a key being involved not not at all so all this while is that a or mr. C or maybe the cracker can also use Bob's public key to send to Bob and Bob will say oh okay it looks like it's from Alice but it actually it could be from a, a cracker okay so let's look at the another scenario which is a lot more secure so this is called the digital signature okay um, okay so first of all this is the original message okay now first we're gonna encrypt using Bob's public key to encrypt the message okay and afterwards this message itself we then run through a hash algorithm now what is a hash algorithm hash, hash algorithm is to come up it is an algorithm to produce a, a value the hash value which is a very small value that actually represents the content of this information a hash okay and if if one of the, if one of the bits of this uh, content has changed therefore the hash uh, value will also changes okay so then this hash value will then be encrypted using okay guess what uses ace private key okay now this time we're going to use uh, Alice private key to encrypt the hash okay now remember hash value is actually not so um, 
hash value is something to, just to do some comparison because if somebody were to run through the same hash algorithm which we will cover it later like for example md5 or crc and somebody will actually generate the exact same value as uh, from the original contents okay so this uh, hash will then be encrypted with users a private key but to become we call it the digital signature okay so this signature represents a is the one that signed so after that the message will then be sent over and also the digital signature is sent over to uh, to to bob now first of all when bob received the uh, the message bob used uh, his own private key to open up why because earlier it was used public key bob's public key to encrypt so bob would use private key to open up the message okay now the message can be successfully readable but the question is that mm, how about the, the sender? How can I trust who's the sender that sent to me? So in this example, um, the signature actually mentioned that, hey, I'm from Alice. I'm the one that signed this letter. So what happened is that, how do I trust you? Bob says, how do I trust you? Okay. So Bob can then, again, earlier it was using the Alice private key. So now Bob uses Alice public key and to try to decrypt this digital signature. So the result after decrypt, it will come up with the, the hash uh, value. Okay. Now, if this is really coming from a user A, okay, first of all, the message can be decrypted and it's not from C. Okay. If let's say a uh, hacker C tries to pretend using A, using hacker C's private key to, de to, to encrypt and therefore in this case uh, Bob if Bob uses uses a public key and therefore Bob cannot open up or cannot decipher uh, hacker C okay uh, the digital signature okay then the whole process will stop here okay but let's assume that this message is really come from user A so so First of all, after the message has been deciphered, become a hash, and again, so what happens is that Bob will also run through using the content and run through the hash algorithm. So example, MD5, okay, and the result should come up with uh, a hash value. Now this hash value has to be the same as the hash value over here. So if these two value matches, so Bob can be assured that, okay, the message that you sent over, I managed to decrypt, and then based on the hash calculation, yes, it is actually comes from uh, Alice. So, so this is actually to protect uh, both situations.